Greetings everyone and welcome back to Thea the Awakening. Where in the last episode we managed to grab, well we actually did a, a quest or two on our way down. In fact one that we didn't need to do and of all of the quests that we did in the last episode the Voyagers managed to pick up a curse from the one that wasn't necessary. I think there's a lesson in this somewhere. Uh, but anyway, in this one we need to clear out this three skull battle from around Dapadel. We need to visit the deity to get a curse lifted. And then we're really... Uh, it's up to us. We could go and visit this this tower. I'm tempted to do so, honestly, just because the more places we go, the better things will generally be for us in terms of uh, experience. Though, that being said, you know, the more chances you have to pick up curses. Yeah, I'm still still not particularly happy about that one. Uh, right, well, we're going to go ahead and just going to gather some meat here. And we're going to share out our best uh, gatherers to try and help out a little bit. And get in everything we need to get. There we go. And you can go with it. We're not going to quite get uh, enough wood there, but, well, maybe. We did that. No, not quite. Maybe instead do that. Nope. You get exactly... Oh, no, there we are. <laughs> we'll get everything. There we go. Not too bad, eh? Okay, we are still working on a sword back in Dapadel right now. We got some coal. Ooh, that's actually very nice from the well. All right, so we've got a four, well, sorry, a three skull, goblin bull rider, three goblin warriors. It's not going to be particularly difficult, honestly. Now, in terms of, you are set upon by a small group oh, really? of rugged looking dwarves. Oh, oh. Their faces are scarred, okay. as if they cut off their beards with their axes, which they probably did. Their clothes are worn and their eyes hungry. Only their weapons remain in perfect condition. The last remnant of their bygone heritage. One steps up and spits before speaking. My knee, or we'll kick your teeth in now. Whoa, whoa, can we talk about this? The lead dwarf spits and grunts at you. Less talking, more doing, my hummy friends. I got little patience for talk. You look weary and hungry. We'll share our food with you, but nothing more. Surely that's better than bloodshed. Well, we've got a fairly good group for, for social. Honestly, we could do with a couple more dedicated crafters. In terms of everyone within our our colony frankly we do need more uh right well we've got support out we've even got confused which is fairly good but no one's really got confused at a high enough rank for that but we could get you forward uh we will then follow you up with hmm yes sean Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, we will have... Sean is going to go forward. Sean will do 11 damage, which is all we need to do. Because you've got to remember, it is the damage that they do. Then additional status effect damage. It's not of the 10 damage, one will be life leech. It's there'll be 10 damage, then one life leech damage. Which will in turn give one health back to Sean. Uh, you can go ahead and move forward. You're already capable of taking this Dwarf Bandit out, and we don't need to worry about these ones because they won't get a turn in the first go. We can now play two cards. Let's play both of you in that order. And the problem here is we may end up going both for this one because we won't kill anything outright. So what I'm going to say is we are going to support Ally for four. Well, no, no. We'll support ally. Hmm. Might have been better to use that elsewhere. I could always use a first action after support ally. Uh, because, you yes, that would be a better way of doing it. What we'll do is we'll get you up to the point where you can easily take out this bandit. Now, what's going to happen? Kijukun's going to take out the first bandit. Sean will talk down the second bandit. Obsidian Mist will talk down the third bandit, leaving Oxherd to talk down the last won't quite get there for Oxherd. It's not a problem because Rivsung will join in the argument with Oxherd and bolster their arguments, shoring up any any uh, logical weaknesses that might have been there, any fallacies, so that the Dwarf Bandit hasn't got a chance. Well done, team. Your men stand firm, showing off their strength and confidence. The Dwarf Leader listens to you, then speaks. Today you shall eat well and sit with us by the fire so that all of us may see tomorrow. The dwarves look relieved at their leader's words. 
There we go. Go. We get uh, eight mithril and a bonus to our blessing. Well, we get five speed for twenty turns on everyone in in the uh, in the group. That is amazing. Share some food. There we go. You share a meal by the fire and exchange stories of woe and victory. One of the bandits stands up and speaks. So be it. We shared bread. We spoke by the fire. We leave as friends. May we meet again. May the we meet again, leave. indeed. How dapper. I approve. Now, we kind of got waylaid on our way up here to deal with some scallywags. Right, okay, so. Here, I think it is... Now, I can't remember exactly how many cards are involved. Now, the way that this works, we've only got, I think it was four cards that we need to deal with. We are massively outnumbering them, and we've got a fairly confident group here. We could do a three-skull battle on social. We'd probably still win. A three-skull battle on fight. Now, the way that the, the challenges work, something that I haven't really gone into in any great depth, but I feel that uh, perhaps <laughs> that, was, that was a bit of a mistake on my part, because th there is something to consider here. When you're fighting, you're fighting against however many creatures are in that stack. The skulls are based roughly on the kind of level of creature you're going to find. Uh, they don't really have equipment, per se. That, that's more something for your characters. Generally, they, they just do a certain amount of damage. They have a certain amount of shielding, so on and so forth. And uh, in a fight challenge, you'll fight however many of them. That can be a lot. Sometimes you might be fighting 30. But that's the most I've ever seen. But there might even be more, especially for the, like, the orange multiple skull battles. Um, so at that point, certainly for our game, we could never meet that on even ground. At most, even if we had a group of 40 people, we could only take 16 of them into any fight at any time. Um, so, you know, you're always going to be at a disadvantage there, but generally you can get some really, really powerful characters with your gear and just the, the, the characters you might have, so fighting, you know, is useful. However, when you do a social battle, once again, you'll be fighting against however many creatures are in the stack, so that might be 30 creatures, and if all of them can do a little bit of talking, then, yep. Oh, that's going to be a rough battle because I re very rarely find numbers as high in terms of damage and defense in social versus fight challenges for your people because most gear doesn't help with that. That being said, if you go into building gear with a mind to building for social and you have like mostly crafters in your group rather than warriors, then yeah, maybe you, you might stand out. But once you get to the other types like sneaking, tactics, hex... Um, uh, which other ones might there be, um, poison or, or whatever, you become much, this is like the concept, like physical challenges, what, what have you. It's the concept of that thing, sneaking versus solving the problem through force of, of, of just your strength alone, so a physical challenge or, or maybe a dexterity-based challenge or, or however many different things, tactics down here. You will only face a certain number of cards based on the skulls. And I think it goes from two to four. So two on a one skull challenge, four on a two skull challenge. I think it is eight on a four skull challenge. Or it might be 13 or something like that. Or, or, or maybe 13 is for five skull and above. It never gets more than that. So you could be facing a, a stack of 20 enemies if you just pick sneak. You've already almost halved that, depending on on you know the the skull amount. Um, so yeah, it's 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 quite powerful to consider in that regard as well. Now, our group are they good at sneaking? Are they good at, at social? They're fairly good at social, I would say. If we have a look here, we've got fifteen speech, and we've just got a massive bonus to our speech, so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of damage. So we're going to be going with social because we've just gained that. No matter what they've got, I doubt they can out social us right now. But sneak is definitely an option later on in tactics. I'm not as big on tactics, but sneak definitely. Because you can generally get very, very high sneak numbers just from having crafters in your party. You stand firm, posturing and flexing your muscles as much as possible. You tell them bloody tales of your many exploits. Weaving your uh, waving your bloodied weapons as proof. Or maybe even weaving them, just, just bending the swords and, and making a nice tapestry of blades. That's how strong you are. And uh, that would no doubt add to the impressiveness and, and the intimidation factor of your words, I would think. How do you think we've survived this long in the darkness, eh? By being nice or eating the bloody hearts of our many enemies after we've woven our swords into a nice tapestry? 
Uh, one Goblin Bull Rider, three Goblin Warriors. If it was a Goblin Shaman, they'd be a little bit more worrisome, but I don't think we have to worry much about this. All right, we'll open up uh, strong, shall we? We're going to lay down Rivsung, who can do 15 points of damage by themselves. That Goblin Warrior is a goner. Next up, Obsidian Mist. And we will also follow up with Kenneth, who can do 13 points of damage. More if they've already been wounded. So Obsidian Mist is going to take out that Goblin Warrior. And then Bubbles, who is fantastically good at chattering. And then Oxhead. There we go. Let's see how they play. Uh, they don't want to play the bo Goblin Ball Rider. That's actually quite interesting. Um, do I have any counter offense? I do, but not very much of one. Um, you know what? I'm just going to pass the turn. I very much doubt they're going to be able to. No, they only had 11. They're, they're goners. There's nothing they can do. But just to be certain. There you go, Oxhead. There we are. And with that, they should go down fairly easily, let's be honest. There we go. Right, your opponents feel uneasy at first, but slowly it turns to outright fear and panic. They not only run away, but drop some of their stuff on the way. Marvellous. That's Darkwood, good. I'm only looking at these to see what we're going to get back. That's some iron. Um, iron and Darkwood. If it was made of something I don't have access to, I might not break it down. Uh, yeah, we'll break that one down as well. Good riddance, take their stuff. There we go. Nice and easy. All right, next up. Uh, wow. Well, is there much here to gather? Not really. We could step up here and do a little bit of gathering of herbs, I suppose. Make the most out of your turns where you can, is my advice. Really, we don't need any of the the uh, logs around here. There's just really no point. We'll just make sure that we're getting these two to some degree. Uh, all right, we'll swap you guys over. There we are. And then we'll just drop everyone over here to help out with bubbles there. So we'll get two stacks of, of wood and one stack of herbs. Not too bad if you ask me. All right, what did we get over there? Oh, yes, it was coal. That's right. There we go. And we have made a sword. Fantastic. All right, let's go have a look at this beauty then, shall we? That is damage 12, shielding 7, and 3 attractiveness, which would, in turn, give you uh, benefits... When it came to um, to social challenges. Now, we'd be dropping 11 damage, possibly. Like, it'll be... The Dark Sword will do 11 damage as standard, but against a wounded opponent will actually do 15 damage. So there's a little bit of a drop there. And we'd be swapping Will for Attractiveness. Honestly, they're used in many of the same, same things. If we're not getting rid of your stuff, that's bloody awesome. Um... Also, it wouldn't be any any much uh, much better anyway, so we'll just leave things as they are. What did we get? We got some sandstone. That's not too bad, I suppose. All right, let's break camp, and let's get over to this smithy. We have to share the good news. Hello. Hidden away in a quiet alcove, you discover a single house amongst ruins of some old town. There is smoke coming from the chimney, and the sound of hammering inside. This is clearly a smithy. You notice an unusually large pile of rocks sitting by the house. Okay, the Rosalka, thanks for telling me who she is, by the way, has agreed to the date. If you burn this red ribbon in your furnace. The dwarf walks out to greet you again. Mm. How do I know you're not lying to me? I have this here lock of her hair that is supposed to prove her word. Well, it does sound convincing, but I don't know. What did she say exactly? She said she had an eye on you because she likes your, um, well, you know, your muscles and skill with the hammer and, and all. <laughs> Really, you've got four four lord and wraith, wraiths there? I'm not actually sure that they're particularly good in combat. They're basically ghosts. Uh, and ghosts are not known for their combat prowess. Uh, I'm nobody. You'll easily be able to take out the smith there. And then we'll back it up with Sean. There you go, Sean. Let's see. No, the ghosts are not going to be any issue for us whatsoever. There we go. And you can get in there. And then we will use counter tactics to get rid of the rest. Where possible. Oh, well, <laughs> that doesn't actually make any difference. There we go, that shouldn't be too hard. Well, they, you know, the dwarf smith had a reasonable argument, but it really couldn't stand up to scrutiny, basically. There we go, and the wraiths, they, they were just making noise in the background. Burn the red string in the furnace, you say? Well, I'll be damned. You did it, lassie. I am impressed. Rosalkas are so hard to talk to. Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. I hope it works out for you. 
Uh, Amber and Bone, we'll get rid of that one, but this... Seven damage on a very light bow, too. Oh. That is nice. That's seven will. Oh, Hex challenges. Hex challenges, by the way, are primarily magic, but will does uh, play a part in it. I believe will is your defense in a Hex challenge. I could be wrong about that, but uh, basically that is just pure shielding in a Hex challenge. It has more shielding in a Hex challenge than it does in, in actual physical. Uh, and uh, not really that interesting, that one. We'll be breaking that one down. You're welcome, and thanks for the armor. Bye. There we go. And now we are super overburdened, which is kind of suckful, but oh well. Uh, we'll, we'll pass the turn, and then we'll head on back. That's because we filled our inventory with wood. Right, okay, let's let's head on back. It's been a while out, you know. It's time for us to return to Dapper Dell, where there are now 17 of us, which is actually quite impressive. Okay, uh, what can we build? I can build the meeting hall. Hmm. I mean, we made this from Darkwood, so we've got to attract the goblin, plus two intelligence, plus one, uh, two speech, plus two will. I mean, that's actually fairly good. Darkwood and bone. We could make that better, I think, in time. Uh, for now, let's have a quick look. Well, let's actually equip some people. It's been a little while since we've equipped a bunch of people, so... Definitely some things, some things that I want to do. First and foremost, I would love to give you this. Can't quite, though. But if I could just get your medic up a little bit further. What could I drop? I'd lose concentration gathering and folklore, but it would be... Oh, so close. Well, concentration isn't so bad. These are literally the same thing, basically. Um, I'm going to drop that, and you can have this. It's more important for you to be a good medic than able to support with ranged, uh, effectively. Yeah, and there's no point in us going for that. Okay. Well, Sean, for now, this is just a better setup for you. In terms of your shield, though, that's 66. This is only 68. That's we've got an extra two that we could squeeze in there. But your current shield gives us medic and abilities, so we're sticking with that one, obviously. Uh, and yeah, there's no point in going for that. And your armor gives you a little bit of magic, so we're we're sticking with that one for obvious reasons. In terms of your sword, though, a little bit of extra speech on you is very much welcome. Though you've got a bit of a bonus right now, to you because of the blessing of speech. It's effectively the same weapon. Yeah, it gives a little bit of extra armor and, and poison, but no, I don't think that's a that's a good trade there. Now then, as for you, again, you you're pretty similarly equipped, to be honest. Uh, the only thing you don't have is a shield. Uh, that's larger because you've got a much heavier bit of uh, a garment there. I could instead give you this. I, can't, I haven't got a shield for you, so you may as well have a bigger sword. Uh, you've got the same shielding. You've got more poison, though, and more damage output and a bit of extra stealth. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, who here has the amazing armor? Good, good, good. Let's take that off. We want someone who has... Uh, do we not have a weapon that has got magic on it as well? I believe we do. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's moving. Now, Oxherd. Ah, I'm so tempted. You can't equip this like my warriors can, though. Which is a problem. Fitz can probably equip it better. Okay, let, let's do that. Let's set up Fitz. In fact, I'm inclined to unequip all of my my uh, units here. It's been a long while since we've done this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and unequip everyone completely. And then set up my units completely from scratch once again. With a view to setting up a very powerful um, group to go out and, and chat and uh, run challenges and the likes. Whilst leaving 
a healthy amount of fighters back here in Dapper Dell. Now, this is going to take me a while to do, so I'm not going to ask you to sit here through it because there's going to be a lot of considerations and umming and ahhing and looking back and forth through equipment. So I'm going to lay down a cut here and I will bring you back when I'm done with equipping our people. So see you shortly. And welcome back. Oh, that took me a while. That took me exactly 48 minutes to do. Ah, I bet you're glad I cut that out. Right, so we have a J... Well, I hope I've remembered to cut it out. This is me speaking from the past, hoping that me in the future remembers to cut this out. But, J Panassas, very well set up there. Six medic. Nice. Sara, eh, uh, okay. Good will. Uh, not so great speech or stealth, but uh, decent amounts of damage, very high armor, and even with a bit of folklore in there. Uh, Travis, very similar, very good armor, decent damage, very nice shielding, I must confess. Very nice indeed. Uh, Manu here uh, does a little bit of damage, just piercing damage, it's, you know, actually fairly decent, very high will. Uh, we've also buffed their craft. Svizzle, three craft, 15 damage. Um, very good stealth, actually, on Fizzle. And uh, Jason, 10 stealth. Very nice damage as well. Generally speaking, not too bad. Now, we've already got a couple of people helping us out with things. So let's uh, sort this out a little bit. Now, Fizzle, frankly, we don't need any of this. Realistically speaking, we have got so much of all of it. So we're not going to worry about it. We are instead going to have you guys worrying about other things. Now, we brought a couple of odds and sods back, as you can see. Uh, we could look at making some items. For example, some shields. Well, that would be... Well, it certainly wouldn't be, be a bad thing. Uh, we could make some mithril and dark shields, or, or even mithril and wolf height. Gives it dexterity, perception, the snowy peak. It may have an icy cold glimmer to it, but this masterfully crafted mithril beauty will heat up any battle. Grrr. Uh, though if we went for dark wood, it would give us, well, 11 armor, 10 shielding. I mean, it's nothing amazing, honestly. That dexterity bonus, though, wow. Very nice, though. We could go for, for something a little bit different there. 12 armor, 13 shielding, 4. Oof. That, ooh, that is very tempting. Very, very tempting. We can make two of these. I think, in fact, we're going to. Let's go ahead and get our best crafters on this. In fact, all of our crafters on it. Uh, we'll have uh, a lesser crafter down there, working on that. Cooked greens for now. Uh, we can also have a look at some jewelry, since we have got some very nice jewels. Ah, uh, being said, uh, we could go for this. Should give us a bonus to crafting and to uh, gathering. Yeah, that actually might not be a bad one. Gives it only a plus one to crafting, certainly, but still, that's actually quite nice. We can make a, f we can make one of them. So we'll pop that one up. One, there we go. Get Jay Panassus working on that one for us. It'll take twenty-four turns, but uh, well, actually, I guess I could. Have, well, no, no. We'll have you working on that. Gathering tools. Wouldn't say no to gathering tools. We can make some very nice gathering tools. Uh, gathering four there. We can make quite a lot of them too. Let's make a couple. In fact, we'll pop that up. I'll get you helping out there. It's going to take an age. Truly it will. But, you know, we will eventually start getting uh, getting a little bit of headway there. Uh, you, can, you can go there to help out. Other types of foods, though, that we can make. Let's have a look what we're making. Just cooked greens at the moment. So, with that in mind, let's get uh, some meat dishes on the go, shall we? I think we should. Let's pop you there. Get that being made. Some rabbit stew. Sure, make, make as many rabbit stew as you can for now. 12 rabbit stew. Exactly. Uh, let's bring you all the way down. You can start work on that. It's going to take... You're never going to finish it. But it'll just stop us getting annoying notifications all the time. Uh, you can go ahead and eat those to your heart's content because we've got so much of them. But don't eat these. We don't even need you to anyway. So there we are. Not too bad. Now, you may be wondering, well, where is everyone else? Well, as it happens, I split them off so that I'd have an easier time of looking at things. Basically, I decided on who I was going to be taking out in an expedition. And I equipped them first with the best things that I could give them. 
Then I separated them off from the, the Dapper Gel and I equipped everyone else as best as I could with what was left. So this is a quick look at the stats. I'm not going to go over everyone because we've got a lot of people here, but you'll notice that I have given uh, specific consideration to stealth and magic. For example, Bubbles now has 11 magic. That is pretty potent, actually. And 18 will. I mean, it would be better if she had more will, I'll be perfectly honest. But we, you'll see we've got a lot of people with a lot of stealth now. A lot. Of stealth so that uh, should be opened up to us um, generally speaking we've got a decent set of gatherers as well got a little bit of magic here and there but not too much unfortunately uh, even our warriors are, are fairly good at what they do and we've got three people who can actually apply magic so you know we'll, we'll bear that in mind right so with that done it's time for us to continue on the way now we could do a little bit of uh, trading with the goblin village couldn't we do I have any items to bring along? I do. Sure, I'll, I'll grab a couple of these. Yeah, there we go. I'll bring those along. And in fact, one more. And we'll take it over to the Goblin Village since we're going to be heading that way anyway. Uh, most of this is going to get broken down. In fact, before we go there, let's go ahead. Head on in. Inventory. Over there. There we go. We could break everything down here if we really wanted to, but... Uh, I prefer not to. That one's going to be broken. Yep. Now, as for these, it's got a nice four poison there. That one can be broken. Ah, uh, they're good. I like the poison on them quite a lot, actually. Uh, as for these, no, I don't think we need to worry about that. Uh, actually, that one's not too bad. It's very light. This one can be broken down now. Uh, that's five diamonds. I wouldn't mind getting those back. I'm not sure we will. I think we had one diamond before, so we can always go and double check on that in a moment. Now, these are really heavy for what they give. Stupid heavy. I'll keep one of them, but... All right, let's have a quick look. Did we get any diamonds from it? Yeah, we got one diamond. Yeah, it's good enough for me. All right, okay. Onwards. Uh, I guess we'll just stand over here. Oh. Oh, dear. Come across the skeletal remains of an ancient dragon, clearly fallen many decades ago, as the bones are covered in moss, vine, and partially submerged in the ground. If it wasn't for Lady Ladder's luck today, it would have likely missed it. Collect the bones, but on Morena's wit, be careful. Very well. You go into the dragon's belly to search for un uh, for usable bone, but you're surprised to see some armor-clad dwarves in your way. Halt, thieving maggots! These here bones are ours! Your dwarven, your dwarven companion speaks. Now, you listen me, brothers. Why don't we have a wee drink and share? I think we will easily win. We'll probably easily get that one too, but uh, no, we're going to go with this one. Three Dwarven Warriors. They've got no chance. Not against this many talkers. There's just not a happening. Sure, we'll open up with Bubbles. Go ahead, Bubbles. There we go. No. Even you, no. Uh, do we have anyone who's got piercing? No, we don't. Uh, Sean is up next, followed by Obsidian Mist. And, yep, yeah, you're pretty much all just doomed. In fact, we're just going to leave her there. There you go. Indeed. Verily. Quite so. Ah, fine. You beardless soft tongue. Sharing is good, too. Great to hear, and perhaps one of you will join us. Whatever they reply, leave. Uh, no, we, they didn't join us. Okay. Uh, fair enough, then. That would be amazing. Like, wow. We're okay. Uh, right, we've just made a... No, 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 that was, like, earlier. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Right, we can go ahead and pitch camp and quickly gather some things while we're here. There's no point in not doing so. There we are, and pass the turn. There we go. Level up. Sean is more intelligent, Fitz is healthier, Rifsung is more tactical, Kenneth and Bubbles are more willful, Obsidian Mist is just better armored, Oxford is just better at crafting, Russell is better at gathering, and nobody is better with traps, Kijikun has, knows more folklore, and Liam Daly is stealthier. I like it. And back at uh, camp, Svizzle and uh, Sarah are healthier, Travis and Manu are stronger, Manu very much stronger, Jason is better at crafting, and Japan S is more intelligent, that is actually pretty, pretty bloody good. And we got some fish. Excellent. Right, break camp. Let's go on up to the Goblin Village. 
Oh, they're goblins. You approach a small, well-hidden village inhabited by goblins. The settlement is stowed away in one of the many craters left by the Age of Darkness. You see a wooden palisade, several huts, and a central stone-built monument. Perhaps a shrine of some sort. Report your success to uh, Mukshir. So, you've spoken to the treasury yet? That stubborn thing was really hard to talk to, you know. But we made the deal. Although, I don't know how you can work with them. Yes. Well, if it was an easy task, we wouldn't it be is looking true. for strangers' help, right? In any case, business is business, and we must all survive. Thank you, friends. Convincing a bigot to see reason is no small feat. Here is a small token of our thanks. You're very welcome. So now, let us talk business. Our villages should trade and help each other. We can exchange 20 iron for 20 leather, 10 gold for some advanced trophies, Three ranged weapons for some advanced trophies, minimum ten. Two sets of armors for some rare trophies, minimum eight. Want to trade? Uh, we'll trade for the rare trophies. Lose two armors. Please take it out of my inventory. Excellent. No! See you next time. Uh, I actually dra drag... I mean... Mm. So now, yeah. let us talk business. Okay. Our villages should trade and help each other. Yes. Excellent. Uh, I think you're See grabbing you my... Time. Oh, so annoying. So more. Excellent. Here we go. See you next that is time. genuinely so amazing. I'm Excellent. willing to trade all of my armor really for time. it, but... Okay. So now, let Some us ranged talk. weapons. Excellent. Here we go. Uh, they're not so See great, you next but... Time. So now, let us talk business. Mm, once more. Excellent. Here we go. Okay. See you next time. Great. Off we go. That has ruined my gear, by the way. That has absolutely decimated my gear. Uh, but... Uh, really, the one that hurts the most is losing uh, is losing the ancient bone armor. That that was painful, really painful. But we got eleven ancient bone, uh, enchanted bones back, and twenty one dragon bones. That is, in no uncertain terms, pretty bloody amazing. Really, really good. Uh, I mean, I could give you some of this stuff. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, Kichigun, let's get you some better gear. It is a shame that they grab the the most awesome stuff, but to be honest, it makes sense, I guess. Uh, let's get that. Ribson, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, you're not going to be fine for a while. I'm going to need to save up for that, unfortunately. Uh, but that that's, that's okay for now. All right, then. And that's actually it. They're gone. And that is the unfortunate thing about it. You, If you've got enough stuff with you, and if I realized it was going to work like that, I would have brought ridiculous amounts and just traded and traded and traded and traded and then left. You only get two or three trades before it will despawn. However, if you keep the... Uh, if, if you work with the bigot and say, ah, damn the goblins, that's infinite from what I understand. So bear that in mind. All right. Let's go ahead. Uh, we'll go with a sneak attack. You are like a cat, stalking its unknown prey as you slowly approach the enemy. You lie in wait, still as a statue, ready to pounce. Wait for the perfect moment, then kill them all! Right, let's hope that this works out okay. Uh, we've got a lot of... of um, we can tank a lot of damage here. Uh, you're up next, I'm nobody. That's fine. Uh, we've got counter offense. What kind of levels are they? Not very high, actually. Well, in that case, then, let's just wipe them out. Oh, higher than that. All right. We'll just take as many down as we can. Sure. Take another one down. Take another one down. Doesn't really matter now. Are you going to play the card or not? Yes, you are. That's fine. We'll take a little bit of damage. I could shield you, though, to... Oh, well, wrong person, actually. But doesn't really matter, all things concerned. But as you can see, having high enough um, qualities like Will makes it very, very hard for them to, to stand against you there. Uh, I think it was Will. It was counter-tactic was Will, and counter-offense itself is stealth. So, you know, having a, a solid direct attack is very, very useful. There we go. And down we go. All right, next up. Once again, we'll get... I'm nobody in there. You can easily um, 
suffer the damage they're going to be able to do. I should have actually used counter tactic, maybe, shouldn't I? A little bit of a silly, uh, silly miss on my part, but that'll be enough people there to deal with anything. There we go. You assassinate your enemy in cold blood and with the grace of an alpha predator. It is possible one or two have escaped the bloodbath, taking some of the loot, but without any injuries, you have managed to eliminate the threat. And we got a hammer. Um, yeah, sure, we'll take that hammer. It's always useful to have someone equipped in your main group with things like hammers. And it might, it, 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 on the surface, be like, well, what would necessarily be the benefit of that? Well, there are some events that, that require that you have tools. And so showing up with a hammer, very useful. We're not going to bother grab, grabbing that, I don't think. An old woman staggers into your village. Oh, no. She is wearing a long hooded coat, and underneath it, you see bandages sticking out. Take a closer look. You notice the old woman has bandages all over her body, and you begin to suspect she may be a rat witch. A rat witch is made when a woman commits suicide on her wedding night, and her body is devoured by vermin. Wow. She then rises from the grave and becomes one with the creatures that devoured her corpse. Uh, I wish we had an extra option. Probably folklore or magic would have given that to us, but unfortunately, attack her. Ugh, okay. Okay, so uh, we will start with Travis. As we've then got a bunch of... Um, piercing, so we've got first action effectively. Now, do we have anyone who has... No, we've got no one who has particularly strong attack here. Uh, we'll go with buffing you. And buffing you further. There we are. And buffing you even... Well, actually, no, sure, you can get in there. There we go. It'll all be over quickly, don't you worry. There we go. You strike down the witch, but as she collapses, her bandages oh no. burst open and three swarms of rats escape. To your dismay, the rats run into your no. homes and carry off three children, one Damn. for each swarm. Among the bandages, you find some loot, and you have also learnt a valuable lesson about rat witches. Yes. That's the problem, is that we didn't have enough people who would know how to properly deal with a rat witch. Uh, we paid a fairly hefty price for it, too. That was... Quite unpleasant. Quite unpleasant indeed. Ah, three children. Damn the witch! You'd better go find those rats before they harm our children! Oh! We can actually get them! Oh, that's fantastic! I approve! Alright. Well, let's go over to the ZD. And, well, actually... Yeah, we'll get rid of Fitz's curse. Then we'll go and deal with the rat witch. You went to the ruins of an old town. Although you only know this because the Zeody told you so, as there are only stones covered in moss and plant life. But you do see a group of old men, huddled together over a large oaken table. Walk over to them. The Zeody do not turn to you, but one speaks. Grandchildren have come. Our help they seek, but are they too weak? I hope not. Another speaks up. They come for aid, but rules have to be laid. We take our food that will change our mood. A wicker basket appears before you. And you know these forefathers will not speak to you more unless you feed them. That is fine. We've got loads of food. Okay. So you said I could come here if I, we become cursed. You seek our aid and guidance you shall receive. I appreciate that they split it up. curse has its own flavor, and so the relief lies in different realms. You will face a challenge, our child. And if you pass, you shall be cleansed. What sort of challenge? If your body has been wounded by a dark force and will not heal, cursed you are. And you must speak to the spirits of healing. That's what we're going to do. We'll just jump through that one because we have seen that one before and it's quite a long speech. But you've started the challenge with two forlorn wraiths and two wraiths. Let's begin. Opponent's turn. Nothing we need to worry about. And get you in there as well. We'll win this one based purely on the on the uh, cards we've already put uh, from our combat deck. Once again, we've got a very powerful group for just non-fight challenges and actually some fight challenges as well. To be perfectly honest. There we go. The spirits were fairly easy to convince. They understood that we had a righteous heart. To be worthy offspring, we take the curses away from your souls. 
return if you need aid once more. Very well. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we've got a long ways to go. Through the night as well. Rather rubbish, honestly, but... Uh, let's replenish some of our food stocks. And... Uh, we got some regular wood back at the well. Okay. A goblin has shown a goblin boss! <gasps> wow. Look at that. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Making a meeting hall out of, uh, what was it? Obsidian, was it? I think. Yeah. Will 20, strength 25, speech 10, 4 intelligence, 3 gathering, 2 animal kinship, 1 ranged damage, 3 tactics, 1 curse damage. No knowledge about cursing in hex challenges is pretty, uh, pretty useful. I believe that allows you to shield or confuse. Uh, 35 basic damage, 45 armor, and 1 steadiness as well. Oh my lord. Let's just have a quick look. We got some mushrooms. But let's check out the Dapper Dell. Who did we just find? A goblin boss. That is actually a rock breaker. Uh, it's just made straight off out of granite. Uh, dryad wood and monster bone. It's actually not a bad uh, bad piece of kit there. Not quite as good as what we've got already, though. Let's take that off. This gives uh, sturdiness. It's not a very good one, though. Let's equip you probably. You are ridiculous. Ridiculously strong, though. Ridiculously powerful. I could give you this, you'd do a huge amount of damage with that. You would do 37 damage, blunt damage, so you'd just trample through things. Uh, alternatively, I could give you this. Let's just see. Can you... No, you, you can't wield things in the same way that... Uh, that we can often do that. But mm, do we want to give you attractiveness or poison? I think we're going to give you attractiveness. There you go. There we are. So, who's this goblin boss going to be? This, of course, will be Evil Friend. There you are, Evil Friend. Welcome to Dapper Dell. Ah, my lord, that was actually pretty cool. Uh, I guess I'd best get you working on something. Uh, evil Friend, you can help out there. But that's where we're going to be wrapping up today's episode, I think. But though, actually, one last thing we'll do. I just want to double check again what, what it was that I made the meeting hall out of. Uh, oh no, it's Dark Wood. Dark Wood gave, gave us Tracked Goblin, but there we are. That was pretty bloody good if you ask me, but that is going to be it for all, us for now. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope you will join me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care. Let's keep our fingers crossed that future me remembers to cut out that like 28 minutes of me sorting out equipment. Oh my lord.